I am Ruth Neustifter with AAMFT, and we're here today interviewing Dr. Gina Ogden. She is going to be our Saturday morning plenary speaker at our annual conference in 2012 that takes place September 13th through 16th in Charlotte, North Carolina. Gina, thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm so delighted to be here. I am very much looking forward to your presentation, The Best is Yet to Come, Love, Sex, and Growing Older. What are you going to cover during this uh, during this topic? Because I love the name. You know, I see that sex in this culture is defined in ways that leave out most of us after we get to the age of 50, 60, 70, and beyond. Because it's defined by performance. How many times do you have intercourse in the last month or year? And so... Uh, I'm really looking to broaden the definition of sex into something that includes how we feel and what are the messages we're taking into this and what kind of changes are going on in our lives. I think that that is the biggest thing that, um, that impacts us as we grow older is that our life is changing. And so our sexuality is changing. Our relationship to our partners is changing. We may not even have partners anymore. And I also want to acknowledge that so few marriage and family therapists are actually trained to open the conversation about sex with clients. So I want to give some, I want to give a real container for us to be able to do that. Such valuable information, important things to address. And and the topic of our conference is women evolving roles in society and family. And what I'm hearing is you're going to be talking about evolving roles for women in relationships or however they enjoy their sexuality, but also evolving roles of therapists and how we talk with folks about sexuality. Is that right? Exactly. Because as therapists, we can feel way in the dark. I started out as a, as a family therapist and ended up getting trained as a PhD sexologist because I looked up in the family therapy literature under S and the sex literally wasn't there. Oh dear. And in many instances, it still isn't. And I would love to bring that S back into family therapy. And such an important topic for therapists to feel comfortable with because, you know, we, we have the additional training, but we say, we come from the same backgrounds as everyone else. So for some of us, this is a difficult and very private matter to be bringing up, but, but so important, something that so many people are struggling with, right? That's right. And we need to learn the ethics of bringing it up. I think many therapists are afraid if they bring up sex that that makes them liable in some way to some terrible judgment in the sky and there are wonderful and easy and comfortable ways that we can do that and so I want to offer really a take-home model for therapists. You are the the creator of a nationwide survey integrating sexuality and spirituality which I'm going to be very interested to hear how you're integrating the two of them and what your respondents had to say, what your participants had to say. How did you become so interested in this topic? I know that you said that you wanted to bring more sex into the field of marriage and family therapy, but I bet you must have been interested before that even. <laughs> I was, and I, I got interested in spirituality because I was listening to my clients over a couple of decades of hearing what they were saying about the meaning of sex in their lives and the kind of heart-to-heart -heart relationship they were having with their partners. So uh, I began to uh, ask those questions, realized there had never been a survey on the integrating sexuality and spirituality. So in the mid-90s, I did one. Almost 4,000 people responded, and I've been creating this model ever since, a model I call the ISIS model, which is an acronym for integrating sexuality and spirituality. That sounds very exciting, and I know that we are all going to be interested to hear more about your model and also how 
we can use your approaches to ethically open those conversations with our clients and be doing good work in this in this very important area that can be challenging for clients as well as some therapists. What, uh, what are you most looking forward to about being able to address a big audience of family therapists at the annual conference? I'm most looking forward to the response. I, well, I love hearing what other people say back. I think a large part of what I teach is about awareness and listening rather than telling other people what to do or what they should be thinking. So I'm looking forward to the interaction, to the energy, and looking forward perhaps even to modeling that as a therapeutic stance. Well, I'm looking forward to that, too, and also uh, seeing you at your book signing. That will be happening right around your plenary as well. Thank you so much for joining us this year at the annual conference. I'm very excited about having you. Well, I'm excited, too. 